quick shout out to the Papa Good Gaming channel. Putting all my gaming stuff on there. He's running for president. This is announcement. Uh, it's uh, I don't know. It's going to be something. Frankly, I don't think Biden can make it to 2024. I think he kind of he's old and he's not all there. I think he's doing his best. Um, and I don't hate Biden. This has been a very calm presidential term compared to the last one. I will say, if if Trump had originally won, my career would be making a lot more money. Think about it. A lot of people blew up on Trump. Trump created an atmosphere that was so toxic and insane that normal people like myself seemed intelligent. Um, but like, yeah, I think uh, I'm fine with the conservative winning. I just think that there's probably better than Donald Trump. Um, I think that some people have an unhealthy obsession with this guy. And I think that even conservatives that I talk to who voted for Trump, they, they're not Trump fans. They're like, yeah, he's the conservative and I didn't like Biden. Okay. I didn't like Hillary. Oh, that's fair. I can see why you didn't like them, but I don't really like Trump. That's normal. Not that anybody who really likes Biden or Hillary. So let's see how his announcement goes. It's been a while since we saw him. So at least we can get some entertainment value. Frankly, he might win if it's up against fucking Biden, to be honest with you. Um, I don't know if there's a single Democrat that's liked very well. I mean, what's, what's a politician that's liked very well? I don't know. In order to make oh, let me turn that up. Glorious again, I am tonight announcing my candidacy for Ooh. president of the United States. Yeah, Donald Trump. Ooh. 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 So many incredible friends. Oh, he turned himself up. And family here tonight. It's such a beautiful thing. It's some people say, how do you speak before so many people all the time? If what that is age it's about having uh, the skills to talk in front of people. You gotta learn that from a young age. There's love in the room. It's really easy. If you want to know the truth. True. Yeah. You ought to try it sometime. <laughs> Together with Donald Trump, but no, he's loved three women. We will be taking on the most corrupt forces and entrenched interests imaginable. Truly speaking, though, and I mean this for real, um, the, one of the big things right now that would really push me away from Trump, uh, it, it wasn't just the irresponsible tax cuts that had no longevity to them. The reality is, is that we need a, fis a fiscally responsible president that understands that there are going to be times where we need to raise taxes. We need, there's going to be times where we need to uh, enforce more taxes. Like what, Trump, what, what uh, Biden did by enforcing, like you know, collecting taxes from a lot of these millionaires, billionaires was phenomenal. Um, we need more tax enforcers, and he, they need to know when to cut spending. And conservatives are cut taxes, but not spending, and it just doesn't work. The reality is, is his tax cuts, the trickle down in economics, needed to hit a 6.7 percent consistent GDP great growth the entire presidency in order for it to sustain. Before coronavirus is over, it was going down. It peaked at 4.2. That's great, but we can't pay for it. The annual federal deficit was going up. The difference between a deficit, like a, a deficit and a debt, is debt is the total amount that you owe. A deficit is the amount that you're paying over what you're taking in. We need to reduce the the amount of money that we're either spending or increase the amount of money that we're pulling in or both at the same time in a way that's, of course, not going to completely destroy the middle class. And a lot of this has to have a conversation to do with incredibly rich people that are running the, you know, the country and have a profound amount of wealth siphoned up to the top. Back in the 50s, there wasn't so much money back up in the top. Somehow it's gotten to be a very wide chart. And yet every time we talk about making America great again, we never talk about not doing that anymore. Uh <laughs> When Trump uh, in inherited his his office, he was at about a $650 billion annual federal deficit. He pushed it up to a trillion dollars before the coronavirus started. Coronavirus is a fucking shit show. I understand why things went to hell there. His spending policies were irresponsible. Obama inherited a, like a 1. 1. 1.2 or $1.4 trillion annual federal deficit from Bush, and he got it down to $650 billion by the time, end of his per, uh, presidency. That's fiscal responsibility. That's what we need to do. We need to lower our deficit uh, and figure out a way to make the lower middle class more robust. But on top of that, the biggest issue that I have with him right now is Ukraine. I don't know how he would have to work it there. He was too friendly with Russia. Russia is anti antithetical to, to us, to what we believe in, the freedoms of speech that we have, um, you know, and the, the freedom to be a person like we have. And they're trying to take over an ally of ours that better represents our democracy. Uh, Ukraine isn't perfect. There's issues of like homophobia, transphobia, uh, all of, you know, racism and shit there. It's not as bad as Russia. We need to understand how we could support our allies, people who make it clear they want to be allies and not allow Russia to take over land uh, from Ukraine that they have historically genocided uh, Ukrainians out of just to implant Russians into. Russia is a very 
Isn't a, Russia's not a good country. Russians are good people, but Russia isn't a good uh, country. And like, that's a big thing that I, I, I fundamentally, I, as a person, I'm very into like, you know, it, we need to support our allies and our friends. Ukraine is our ally. They're our friend. And I don't think that Trump would represent the situation correctly. Our country is in a horrible state. We're in grave trouble. This is not a task for a politician or a conventional candidate. This is a task for a great movement that embodies the courage, confidence, and the spirit of the American people. This is a movement. This is not for any one individual. This is a job for tens of millions of proud people working together from all across the land. And I would say probably more like 330 million people working together across the land. But from all walks of life, young and old, black and white, Hispanic and Asian, many of whom we have brought okay. together for the very, very first time. If you look at the numbers, if you look at what's happened with Hispanic, with African American, with Asian, and just look at what's happening. This is a party that has become much bigger, much stronger, much more powerful, can do much more good for our country. This is I think it's, I mean, I don't, I don't know what the numbers are, if that's actually true, that more, uh, you know, minority voters voted for, or people of color, BIPOC people have voted for Trump. Um, I don't really know. What I will say is some of the rhetoric that uh, Trump pushed out ended up having negative impacts on people. When he was going on talking about how it's the China virus, Chinese virus, it's true. It came from China. So logically, it makes sense. The unfortunate part is that the negative impact of that was an increased amount of hatred towards uh, Asian Americans, not just Chinese people, Japanese people, Korean people, etc. cetera. Um, <clears throat> that what like that's a huge problem and i can understand that you want to blame it on china but if the out that the outcome of you constantly saying china virus china virus china virus is hurting asian people it might be time to reconsider the way that you represent yourself to 330 million americans as well as the entire rest of the world as the strongest person in, in the world uh rhetoric like that like the rhetoric about how like they're sending rapists and murderers and whatnot and gang members over from central and south american countries there are some of them that are using the pipeline of our broken immigration system to do that stuff but the reality is is that it's causing um you know hispanic americans to get fucking harassed because of it as well a lot of it's the way that you speak and nuance isn't a game that trump knows how to speak with uh if he represented some of his messages better maybe they wouldn't have been so bad it's a job for grandmothers and construction workers firefighters builders teachers doctors. the platinum mill yeah trump supported the platinum bill which is basically i would say some form of reparations that one of the t's iced tea ice cube ice cube sorry i always get them confused um, because they have, like, I almost said vanilla ice. He pushed a platinum plan that was supposed to help black Americans, and the Trump administration humored it, and Biden didn't. And I think that that was great. I think that uh, Republicans need to start acknowledging bi like bipolar individuals and trying to support communities like that to give Democrats a run for their money. ...and farmers who cannot stay quiet any longer. You yeah, the Muslim ban didn't help either. <laughs> yeah, that, that didn't exactly help Muslim Americans at all. You can't stay quiet any longer. You're angry about what's happening to our country. Our country is being destroyed before your very eyes. It's a job for every aspiring young person. What's something I think that Trump did good with? Uh, I was he was uh, entertaining, which is not good for a politician. And every hardworking parent, for every Trump acknowledged that we were losing jobs and said he would try to do something about it, and he did. Even if I think that he did the wrong thing to do it by cutting, uh, like the massive tax cuts as well as like environmental cuts were really bad as well. Um, in a long run for capacity, but at least he tried to do something. Whereas Hillary was like, oh, your job's fucked, you know, and she didn't really provide an alternative. So I can respect that. Entrepreneur and underappreciated police officer who is ready to shout for safety in America. The police are being treated so badly. These are great people. They can straighten out the crime. They're the ones that know how to do it. We have to give them back sure. their respect and their dignity. So, like, when it comes to police, I agree. Police are very important to a country. Their existence reduces crime. The problem is, is that they're not exactly acting in the in anybody's in, in our best interest or in the best way that they necessarily could. Um, and I think that it's good to inc uh, implement more, uh, reduce the the buddy buddy, you know, boys club, lack of a better term, um, you know, uh, of re reduction in responsibility in these areas. Increase body cameras, things like this. Make they, uh, police officers have to earn their respect back, you know, and it, you know, that's just the reality. This will not be my campaign. This will be our. The existence of police does lower, does prevent crime. I know that you're reading a statistic. The statistic you're talking about is a statistic that talks about the diminishing returns of the existence of police. Too much police doesn't really lower crime. 
but a certain amount of police representation does have a positive impact on reducing crime. Obviously, conditions that cause people to commit crimes is a better way to go about it. And police are really just uh, are kind of just like the the, uh, the last stand against criminals who do bad things, and most of them because of bad conditions. But realistically speaking, a police presence does lower crime. It's just that when you put too much police into a thing, it doesn't really help. A lot of times, I think there's a study that goes around that talks about like a reduction in police didn't make it uh, didn't actually lower crime or increase crime because they had better technologies to help them police crime better right so with the advent of technology it makes everything more efficient and we don't need as much infrastructure in general or people you know person infrastructure so again i need you to understand the existence of police does reduce crime to a certain extent okay if you disagree i would ask you which club do you feel like is more safe to go to the one with five security guards or the one with zero security guards give me your answer and when you when you break it down to something a little more humanized or more realistic, a little more personalized, you realize, oh yeah, you're right. I do want to be protective, right? For a campaign all together. <laughs> because the only force strong enough to defeat the massive corruption we are up against is you, the American people. This is also bad. The whole corruption angle is is bad too. Like I, I don't I don't really like that. Like there was no widespread corruption that caused Trump to lose. And this constant conspiracy theory bullshit arc that he's pushing is so toxic and incredibly divisive. He is, honestly, at least in my lifetime, the most divisive president that we've ever seen. It's true. The American people, the greatest people Papago, of course, but we also need to focus on more money to poor America. I know I I literally said that in what I said. I said you understand, I said literally we need to focus on the conditions that make people commit crime. That's more effective. But police are the last wall. I said these things. So, that's what I'm saying. You gotta listen over. You gotta, you gotta listen, not just hear what I'm saying. People on earth, we love them all. And we love both sides. We're going to bring people together. We're going to unify people. And it was happening in the previous administration, previous to the previous. And uh, what was bringing them together was success. Prior to COVID coming in, the people... We're calling me that we're calling me. You wouldn't believe it. People that were I so wouldn't. far left, oh. I figured they'd never speak to me and I would never speak to them. But our success was so incredible. What? Like never before. To the former president announcing that he uh, is running for president. Well, you know, you could shut the fuck up so I could hear what he's saying. And again, rewriting the history most recently of the midterm elections. Let him talk and then give us your context after. Uh, back with Dana Bash, Caitlin Collins, Alyssa Farrah Griffin. Joining us as well, CNN presidential historian Tim Naftali. Uh, Dana, any thoughts on what you just Oh, come on. Is there what is this? What the fuck is this, CNN? Well, uh, he certainly tried to heed the warnings of those around him. Well, what they really wanted him to do was not make this announcement right now. But given the fact that he rebuffed that in terms of the content of the speech, uh, tried to stay on policy, tried to remind people of the issues that many of the. Oh, it's an hour long speech. I'm not going to watch that. But hey, he's running. I thought it was a 10 minute speech on CNN, but they did just listen to some of what he said. Moved. I'm now watching an hour of fucking Donald Trump. Okay. I think I gave a good amount of context on what I feel about Trump. I don't think there's anything else he can really say. So cool stuff. Classic CNN goober in me. I want Papa Gut to pee on my face. But just as a friend, there's nothing weird about that. I want him to pee on my face. 